Okay, in part B, we will take a brief look at using substitution for solving recurrence relations. So the substitution method is an alternative way to find the solution to a recurrence relation, and sometimes can be used in conjunction with recurrence with uh, recursion trees, which generate um, formulas to try with the substitution method. Let's suppose we want to solve the exact form of the recurrence relation for merge sort and um, maximum subarray. So here's what we want to solve using the substitution method. Well, how does substitution work? Well, two parts. One, guess the solution. Okay, it requires some insight. And then use induction to prove that that solution works. And along the way, when you use induction, if there's unspecified constants, it will show whether the constraints on the constants. So let's apply that to this example here. So what would be a good guess for a solution for this? Well, solving two problems divided in half looks familiar. We've, we've seen n log n for that before. And then we've got an extra n piece of work to do here. Let's just take a guess to be uh, t of n is n log n plus n. And then for the induction, we first have to show the basis to the induction, the base case. Let's say, um, you know, if n is equal to 1, then uh, we're going to plug in, uh, n equals 1 into the um, formula here. Um, so that's going to be 1 log base 2 of 1 plus 1 and uh, log base 2 of 1 is 0, uh, so that's simply equal to 1, which is indeed equal to what um, our definition of t of n said it should be. Now the important part here is the inductive step. So here we need an inductive hypothesis, which is that if we assume that the statement to be proven is true for some values less than n, then we can use that to show that it is true for n. So our inductive hypothesis will be that t sub k is k log k plus k for uh, all k less than n. And in particular, we're going to look at, let's, let's use k equals n over 2, which is less than n. And so now we want to use this to show that it implies um, the uh, solution. And so this is where substitution comes in. We're now going to write out the formula for t of n. Okay, so this, this is the definition of the recurrence relation, and now we want to turn it into this claim here. Now by the inductive hypothesis, our claim is true for k smaller than n, in particular k n over 2. So we can plug this in using the inductive hypothesis. Because here we have a, a term t n over 2. It's, it's, it's um, on a smaller input. And um, so that we're going to do that by the inductive hypothesis. Remember, induction works by you say, you, you show that if something of a certain size is true means something of a larger size is true. And then you show that the smallest size is true, the basis. It's like knocking over all the dominoes. OK, so now we just have to do some simplification here. So multiplying the 2's out there, we get uh, n log n over 2. We can't take that 2 out, plus n plus n. Now, remember the formula that if you have um, log of uh, a over b division, that's equal to the log of a minus log of b. So we're going to apply that here to break this term up into n times log n minus log 2 plus n plus n. Well, um, log base 2 of 2, what number do you raise 2 to to get 2? Well, that's just 1. Uh, so this becomes n log n minus, remember this is 1, n plus n plus n. And so, of course, uh, these two cancel out. And so we get n log n plus n. 
So critical point here, this is the exact form of the inductive hypothesis that we meant to prove. You, you can't fudge this. When you, when you have the, um, the hypothesis to be proven, you have to, uh, this has to be exactly the same. It can't have any constants or any, uh, you can't turn it into a big O to get rid of constants. You have to match exactly. It's really important uh, to look at the textbook to read the examples because there's many issues and variations on this. Uh, you know, questions of uh, when, for example, when is it okay to um, ignore or remove floors and ceilings? And uh, situations where you can't prove what you're trying to prove because there's a constant you can't get rid of and you actually can uh, make a, a stricter inductive hypothesis that lets you prove it much more than I can get into in this podcast. Uh, we should note, though, I've done this using the exact form of the uh, recurrence relation, but we might, uh, often with um, the kinds of proofs we're doing, we might actually do this with the um, asymptotic form. You know, we might write t of n is equal to uh, theta of uh, 1 if n equals 1 and 2t n over 2 plus theta of n, uh, if you're trying to prove this form, uh, because we're dealing with asympto asymptotic cases, we don't really have to worry about the base case anymore. We just got to, you know, we might show that it's true for some small values, but we don't have to be as strict about the smaller uh, cases. Um, but we do have to, if we want to get rid of this um, theta here and turn it into some algebra, uh, algebraic expressions that we can deal with easily, uh, we just got to remember that this is shorthand for that, you know, there, um, a function being theta of n means there exists some constant that if you multiply it by, you know, the g function, the definition that the, you know, the f function uh, will be smaller. So um, if you're going to replace that theta of n, you're going to, you're going to write um, c of n because this theta notation has hidden in it an implied constant. Uh, and then you're going to be working with the constant through this expression. And uh, as the textbook shows you, sometimes you have to do some special things to make the constant come out the way you want to, matching your inductive hypothesis. And the whole proof will also show you something about what the constraints are on the constant. Also, sometimes if we're trying to prove a, uh, a theta result, you know, theta might require that we, we first, you know, first we show it that it's big O of, of something, and then we show it under omega, and we might show the, those two versions of this recurrence relation. You know, write it with big O, prove it with substitution, write it with omega, in which case, you know, the inequality relationships are going to flip. You know, prove it with omega, and then you've squeezed it and you've proven theta. Well, that's it for the brief introduction to using substitution. I uh, want to emphasize that there are many issues in, do, in this method that you should read the textbook for. I just didn't want to make this podcast interminably long. And we won't be doing a lot of substitution problem solving in this course, but I want you to understand it well enough to understand, understand the proofs when you do read them in the textbook.